Well, Runway ML have been killing it with two game-changing updates to the AI image and video space. Lots of interesting discoveries here, so let's not waste any time, gas up the plane, head off to the runway. First up, the announcements. Runway have unveiled two new features, one being expand video, the other being their own image model, uh, both of which are a very big deal. We'll take a look at expand first. At baseline, expand will take any nine by 16 video and turn it into a 16 by nine video, or conversely, take any 16 by nine video and turn it into a nine by 16 video. It'll then fill out the missing areas of the frame via in painting. Uh, if you're not familiar, kind of like Adobe's Gen Fill, except video. So we'll kick off in what I'm going to call easy mode just by providing Gen 3 some stock video and see how it handles that. We're gonna get pretty weird with it later on. Uh, to get started, simply come down to expand video here and drag in a video file. So we've got some stock footage of a couple in white walking through some, I don't know, it's kind of kind of murky, dirty water. Uh, anyhow, let's uh, go ahead and throw this into Gen 3's expand and see what it does without a prompt. And there you go. Not too shabby in all honesty. Uh, there is a little bit, I would say, of uh, kind of like water inconsistency, I guess, between what would be the 9x16 frame here and the generated part on the side. But I mean, that's really pretty nitpicky. Um, the best part, of course, is the fact that we're not getting any kind of like weird morph or anything like that on our couple walking through the water because, you know, obviously that's just video. Time to generate on that, by the way, was 36 seconds. That's something I, I don't know. It still boggles my mind and I can't stress enough, Gen 3 Alpha is fast. Another stock video that I think Gen 3 should be able to handle pretty well. Uh, this is a video of a woman uh, clearly flexing that she doesn't have allergies. And indeed, it did handle this pretty flawlessly. I mean, maybe it went a little bit overboard in the flower department, but I guess, you know, the runway model has quite the green thumb. What I think is really fascinating is that it gives like some slight lens distortion on the side, really mimicking that wide angle look and like really helping like bake the whole thing together. We can also take a 16 by nine video and turn it into vertical video without having to punch in. That's actually a pretty big deal. Um, so this was our end result with this guy. And yeah, it does a pretty great job. Now in the original footage, is he wearing a short sleeve sweater? I don't know. Uh, but since I don't know the footage, it actually looks like it's pretty accurate. Now the real fun, and this is where things probably get a little bit weird, is when you actually combine those two ideas along with text prompting. So for example, taking this piece of stock footage and bringing it in to make it nine by 16, we got this where uh, admittedly there's like this weird like comet missile flying out of the sky here. That's actually my fault. I left in the text prompt UFO flying in the sky. We didn't get the UFO, but that actually kind of gave me an idea. So bringing this video back in to turn it into a 16 by nine video, adding in the prompt destroyed city in the background, we ended up with this shot, which I mean, looks pretty remarkable. Now, admittedly, we did end up with this guy in like, you know, the blue puffy jacket for some reason. Uh, he was actually in the nine by 16 version as well. There was just a hint of a jacket. So I guess it just continued on by adding the rest of him in. Now, I wasn't super stoked with this guy, but in a previous version, I did end up liking this guy or at least not minding him so much. Uh, so, you know, in a case like this, you could always end up doing just a quick mask. Um, so we just have our guy here and then the rest of our other shot here and it works pretty well. Now, is it always perfect? I mean, I think we see by our guy in the blue jacket. No, it is definitely not. And I think even more so when you're working with footage that either you shot or in a location that you know. For example, as a test, just quickly grabbing my phone and, you know, shooting me saying this. So just trying this out, um, standard vertical video here. Let's see what happens when we run it through Gen 3. And then running it through Gen 3's expand, uh, we end up with a result like this. So just trying this out, um, standard vertical video here. Let's see what happens when we run it through Gen 3. Now, admittedly, I actually find this super hilarious. Uh, I definitely need a pot of last, whatever that is. And uh, also whatever this is, it looks like it's definitely Italian made. I need to have that wall mounted to turn my house into an amplifier. So leaning into the weird and actually, don't worry, we're gonna actually circle back with something that I think is a really cool use case in just a little bit. Uh, grabbing a shot from one of my favorite Twilight Zone episodes, Time Enough at Last. If you haven't seen the episode, I'm sure you have at least seen it culturally referenced. It stars Burgess Meredith as kind of a curmudgeon bookworm who hates being interrupted 
interrupted while he's reading. Uh, the apocalypse happens. He's the only survivor. And now he has all the books in the world and no one to bother him except he breaks his glasses at the end. And running it through Expand, we end up with this piece of, I don't know, kind of surreal Twilight Zone meets Salvador Dali video. Uh, it's kind of awesome, in all honesty, with like, I don't know, sort of like fake Rod Serling back here giving his closing narrative. Um, I mean, is that what we were looking for? Not really, but it's pretty awesome. Playing around with it a bit more, we did end up with this version as well, which I found kind of fascinating because it sort of gave it a different color grade and definitely sharpened everything up. I actually have not seen any other generation do this. And then kind of even more curious is when I took that vertical video and then ran it as a 16.9, we ended up with this, which is very close to the original shot, um, but it gave it to me with four three pillars, which I thought was pretty fascinating. Now I'm purely speculating here, but my theory is that the runway model identified that as an old TV show and thus decided to you know, give me the output in 4.3. The reason I suspect so is because of the Shining test that I did. So I, I took this scene from The Shining, uh, converted it into a 9 by 16 shot, and then brought that over into Gen 3's Expand. The result that we ended up with is pretty remarkable. Um, yeah, it kind of gets everything up until about here. <laughs> So yeah, at this point, I mean, you know, all work and no play, make Jack control, alt delete. But given what we know about how world models work, I think that, you know, when Gen 3 initially saw the original Shining footage, somewhere in there it inferred, yeah, that's probably a hotel lobby. And what are in hotel lobbies? Well, I mean, cheap computers are often in hotel lobbies. Now, there's definitely a lot of fun and interesting ideas that we can kind of play with with Expand, such as what Blaine Brown did here uh, with a shot from the Lord of the Rings. Obviously, the yellow bars represent the actual shot, and then the top and bottom are vertical extends. Viku goes horizontal and vertical expands on this meme, giving us, uh, well, finally the answer to how that fire got started. Yeah, it was apparently she was playing with candles. And Daniel Skull is apparently as big a Shining fan as I am, giving us an extension of the Here's Johnny scene from The Shining. And yes, you might be wondering why there's a bidet mounted to the wall. I mean, I don't know how ghosts go to the bathroom. Maybe they, they can float. All of which got me thinking, how far could we take the expand idea? Uh, so I decided to use one of you know, my favorite like ultra widescreen films, Once Upon a Time in the West. I know the good, the bad, and the ugly gets all the love, but Once Upon a Time in the West is super awesome. If you haven't seen it, definitely put it on your list. So this film was shot in 235. So even in 169, we're going to end up getting black bars at the top and the bottom. That actually works to our advantage here. And while my initial thought was actually to, you know, expand this out and reframe things, uh, what I actually found was keeping it as is, is actually much cooler because when we run it through expand with the pillar boxing, we get something ultra, ultra widescreen. <laughs> Looks like we're shy of one horse. You brought too, too many. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Now, does it always work? I mean, not always, of course, it's AI video, but you can get some pretty amazing results out of it. For example, taking, uh, you know, one of the most iconic shots of modern cinema, the opening of The Dark Knight, we end up with this, which is pretty remarkable when you think about it, considering that the model is essentially generating parts of the city that it has no information about uh, and is more or less maintaining a consistent look across the board. Now, again, does it always work? No, it absolutely does not. In fact, some of the outtakes from that Dark Knight sequence included examples like this, where it kind of ignored the pillar boxing. And I don't know what's going on with that guy. That guy is definitely an awesome Batman villain. I also ran into some weirdness when I was trying to extend out this sequence from Kill Bill, in which the Gen 3 model just decided to uh, pillar box on the sides, uh, two separate characters entirely. Um, yeah, pretty funny. Now, one interesting thing that you could do to minimize this is that uh, within Gen 3's expand, you can actually provide a first reference frame. So what I ended up doing was taking a screenshot of our first frame and then bringing that over to Photoshop's Gen Fill and just filling in the additional details 
for a 16 by 9 image. And then if we provide Gen 3 that first frame, um, simply come up here and hit add first frame. And interestingly, it doesn't seem to conform in terms of the raster size. I could probably play around with the math a little bit more, but I mean, uh, that's it seems to work just fine as is. Because uh, if you hit generate now, it seems to infer enough that it gets the overall idea. Now there is a problem with that aspect ratio on that shot. That's awesome uh, with the breaking of the frame. And then for the last shot, actually, uh, we actually end up with a full extension, despite the fact that, you know, we didn't have any reference material for that. So that's pretty interesting. Hot off the heels of Video Expand is Runway's Frames, which is their new image generator. And this is like completely their own image generator. So this isn't Flux or anything else plugged in. Uh, Runway built their own uh, image model. This is rolling out right now. I actually don't have access to it yet, uh, considering that I'm making this video on the day that it drops, but uh, they claim that frames will allow you to design with precision, uh, the look, the feel, and the atmosphere of any world that you want to create. They provide some examples, including like photorealistic portraits, which, uh, yeah, these look really, really good. 1970s album art, which uh, shows that it definitely has some imagination going on. Kind of a random orc guy, so definitely we can get some fantasy vibes going. And some old school disposable camera looks as well. So yeah, all of this stuff looks pretty great. It'll be interesting to see how their image generation plays with the Gen 3 video model as well. Um, you know, is it going to be optimized essentially for Gen 3? I don't know, we'll find out, I guess. As soon as I get access to it, I will definitely put it through its paces. In the meantime, I mean, I'm just excited that there's another image model out there, kind of like living in an embarrassment of riches. So if you've had the chance to play around with the new image model, please definitely do let me know in the comments and uh, please do let me know what you think of Video Expand. In the meantime, I thank Thank you for watching. My name is Tim.